Hi, how's it going? My name is Shui. In today's video, I want to share with you the exact setup I use to study, create content, and get things done. Also, run my business. I feel like it's going to be a long video, so let's get started. So let's start with the apps I use to read and get information. Gathering information is part of my job, so I use multiple apps. First of all, Refind is my go-to app for finding articles. I like it because it's free and it picks the most relevant articles for you based on your interests. This way, you don't get overwhelmed with a mountain of new articles. That's a problem I had with other apps like Feedly and InnoReader because I get hundreds of new articles in my inbox every single day and it keeps piling up, which was stressing me out. But with Refine, it's AI picks the only handful of articles it thinks you like and deliver them to you every morning. So you still get to read articles you enjoy without getting bombarded with the new ones. Mailbury is another curation app I use for more than a year. Like Refine, it's useful to simplify your information consumption process. It lets you make your own information brew where you can include your favorite blogs, Twitter accounts, newsletters, subreddits and YouTube channels and so on. It will be delivered to your inbox every morning. This way you can see the new content from all of your favorite places in just one email. Checking my Mailbury is actually one of the first things I do in the morning while drinking a cup of coffee. All right. The uh, next one is Matter, which is where I make highlights. Whenever I find interesting articles or Twitter threads, I save them to Matter. And when I have free time, I go to its reading queue and read a few of them and make highlights, which will be automatically imported into my notes app via Readwise. I made a full review video of Matter if you're interested. Speaking of which, Readwise is an absolutely essential app for me because it works as a pipeline between these apps so they can work as a whole knowledge management system. You can connect various apps to Readwise to pull your highlights and send them to your notes app where you can make notes and create content. It's fairly cheap. I use the light plan, which is only $5 a month. Raindrop is another essential tool in my stack. It's my idea storage. I heavily depend on it for creating content and especially for writing my newsletter, which is where I share the best links to my favorite apps, tools, articles, books, and uh, other things I found each week. I always save the cool things I found in Raindrop and then put the links in my newsletter. Also, you can easily access its library using apps like Alfred and uh, Raycast. This is really useful when you want to quickly get the link to the items you saved to share them with your friends or to find references when you are writing. All right, I love listening to podcasts when I'm taking a walk, cooking or on the train. And I believe right now the best podcast app for note takers is Sniped. Like typical podcast apps, you can subscribe to your favorite shows and download some episodes you like. But what makes it different is that you can make audio highlights. So whenever you heard a cool phrase or new idea you want to save, you can simply hit snippet to save the bit. But then you might say, shoot, that sounds exactly like Air, which is another awesome podcast app I like, but I find Sniped a little more polished. For example, it has this feature called Smart Snipping that uses AI to figure out the best start and end point for your audio highlights. Also, it analyzes each episode and makes chapters, which makes it easier to skim, skip the ads and go to the part you want to listen to. So I highly recommend it. For reading books, I use Kindle like most people. But before buying actual books, I like to read their summaries with Shortform, who is kindly sponsoring this video. I like their book summaries because they are much more detailed and extensive than other book summary apps. Plus, they include lots of analysis on how the ideas from different books and authors are related and connected. I love this feature because it makes it easier to discover new books and connect ideas when I make notes later. Also, you can connect Shortform to Readwise, so your highlights are automatically imported into your notes app, which is very useful if you do lots of notes taking. If you want to try Shortform, go to shortform.com slash to get five days of unlimited access and an additional 20% discount on the annual subscription. That means you will get access to thousands of book guides for the price of one book a month. All right, the main note-taking app I use is Logseek. It's probably the most important app in my stack because it lets me make notes, learn new ideas, and create content fast. It has a bi-directional linking feature which lets you connect different notes and ideas as well as built-in space repetition system which allows you to remember what you learned and resurface your old notes so you can develop ideas incrementally. I actually made a detailed video on how I use Logseek if you want to learn more. I sometimes use Obsidian as a secondary note-taking app just because because it has tons of useful plugins that Logseek doesn't have 
yet. Since Logseek and Obsidian are interoperable, meaning you can sync your nodes between them, you can use either one of them you prefer when you want to. So sometimes I use Obsidian and sometimes I use Logseek. Researching is part of my job as a creator and something I have to do regularly. It's one of the most fun parts actually, but it does take a lot of time. So discovering Genie was such a relief. It's an AI powered research tool that lets you collect reference materials from the web and summarizes each of them in an instant so you can digest all the information quickly. The research process took me lots of time before, but now it's much shorter because I can enter some keywords in Genie, collect articles and make my research note then you can start writing on Logseek or Obsidian. I'm planning to make a full review video of Genie, but in the meantime, you can try it from the link in the description. I think of life as a series of projects, therefore being proficient at project management has a huge impact on your life. The tool I use to manage my projects and tasks is Ampunote. I've been using it for more than a year and I think it's super underrated. Essentially, I have a different project as a note in which I plan steps to achieve the goals. Then you can schedule the steps in your calendar. Being able to plan your day and week like this using time blocking is really useful because it helps you overcome procrastination. Also, you can link your task to Note, which is useful to see the context of the task as well as to brainstorm and plan. Note recently became free for personal use, so check it out if you're interested. Arranging meetings and Zoom calls is a pain in the butt, but they are apps that makes it much less stressful. Personally, I use an app called Motion. I reviewed it a while ago and really liked it, so I've been using it ever since. The idea is simple. You can generate scheduling links from your calendar and share them with people so they can choose the best time for meeting. This way, you can save everyone from emailing back and forth to find the perfect time. Some people are weird about these scheduling links and think it's rude, which I find it hard to understand because it saves so much time and gives more freedom and options to the person who got the link. Anyway, I, I like Motion among other apps because it automatically generates a message with your availability so you can copy and paste it to your email. Plus, you can see the different time zones as columns, which is absolutely crucial for me. One of the habits that I'm trying to build this year is meditation. Since there are countless physical and mental benefits, I'm trying to do it every day. For that, I use this app called Medito, which is completely free. I know there are lots of great meditation apps like Calm, Headspace, and uh, Waking Up, but I don't want to spend so much money on a meditation app. Also, these apps tend to have too many different options and courses, which makes it hard to just pick one. It's like trying to pick a movie to watch on Netflix. It takes forever, and I hate that. So that's that's why I chose this relatively simple free app. Oh, speaking of meditation, I'm a huge fan of breathwork. Breathwork refers to a wide range of breathing exercises which help you relax, focus, or sleep. There are lots of them, but in particular, I love the Wim Hof breathing method. It has various health benefits such as better immune system, focus, sleep quality, and so on, some of which are actually scientifically proven. But it just feels good. It's a proper exercise and makes you tired a little, but the feeling you get afterwards is so peaceful and calm, you're just going to have to try it yourself. He has this app to learn the breathing exercise, but you can just search it on YouTube and practice with a video. Let's now talk about emails. Everybody hates replying to emails, but you just got to do it and you can't escape from it. I used to use this app called Tempo for emails, but it got discontinued a while ago, which made me really sad because it was such a brilliant product. So I've been looking for an alternative and settled with Spark simply because it's free and decent. I thought of trying Superhuman, but it's way too expensive. And also I can't be asked to memorize all the shortcuts. It's crazy. Twitter is by far my most favorite social media. It lets you interact with people you admire, make new friends, get new opportunities, show your work to millions of people and build your personal brand. All of these for free. So it's important for me to spend a good amount of time and energy on Twitter. To make this process easier, I use a few tools. One is Hypefree, which allows you to get inspirations for tweets and schedule them. And there are a bunch of other useful features, but in general, it makes it easier to craft tweets and automate them. Another tool I use is Blackmagic. This is probably the best Twitter analytics tool. It's full of useful features where you can see your growth trend, who you interact with the most, your consistency, your best time to tweet, and so on. And you can make a private note for each person, which I find useful for socializing. 
All right, we are getting towards the end. Now let's talk about the tools I use to run my business. But actually, I just use one tool for pretty much everything. That is System. You can build pretty much a whole online business with this tool, and it's really cheap. For any business, having its own website is crucial. You can easily build one without coding with System. Also, you can build your own newsletter and funnels. You can create your online courses and sell physical products. You can even build your membership website. So it's really an all-in-one tool. I used to use Webflow for building my website, Revue or ConvertKit for newsletter, Teachable for setting online courses, but now I can do all of this with just one tool. It saves so much time and money and removes the complication. All right, finally, let me show you the tools I use for video editing. Mostly I use Final Cut Pro since I use a Mac, but sometimes I use Descript. This is incredibly useful because it can automatically remove the filler words such as arm and like as well as the silence between your words or sentences. It makes the video editing process much faster. If you're looking for easy video editing software, this script might be a great option for you. By the way, I have an online course about how I make videos, so check it out if you're interested. All right, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you sticking with me till the end. I will see you in the next video. Bye.